Let them be ashamed which transgresses without cause. Oh, show me thy ways, O oh Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truths and teach me, for thou art thy God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O oh Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swung deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to choir in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. And he shall set me up upon a rock. Amen. We are here to celebrate the life of Miss Jerry White. When I met her, she was Miss Geraldine McGee. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, we will proceed with the order of service as the family has requested. We will have a selection by Miss Alexis McGee, scripture reading, Old Testament by Mr. Justin Dawson, New Testament by Miss Portia McGee, and prayer by Mr. Calvin White.
You called me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans arise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never failed and you all start now. So I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours and you are mine. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Where my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior and i will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when no shines arise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are mine i am yours and you
Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleeps in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord wherever wherever comfort one another with these words let's uh let's pray y'all dear lord jesus God, we all just sit here in this moment. We really just take this moment in, Lord. God, we throw away all distractions right now. Lord, thank you for this life that we get to celebrate. Thank you. Oh God, such a heavy thing to say in a moment like this, but we choose to say thank you. Thank you for all the memories that we get to cherish. Thank you for all the times that we get to have. Thank you that my grandmother, she was a, she was a mother. She was a grandmother. She was a friend. Lord, we say thank you for that. Lord, there are so many things in this moment that, that we can choose to hold on to. There are so many things in this moment that we can choose to, to, to dwell on, to, to, to kind of just fester inside of us. But Lord, as you just said in your word, Father, we have a reason to have hope. And to know that, that you are on the throne, that, that to be absent from the body is to, pre- is to be present with you. Yes, yes, yes. What a reality that is. So for this moment, Lord, we ask just for comfort. Yes. We ask for your presence. Your real, tangible, you, the real you, God, not something that we can make up in our in our hearts but right now God we ask you Holy Spirit of God just descend upon this room and be with us as as we sing as we rehash memories as we laugh as we cry Jesus you tell us that you, you just choose to be with us even in these moments so we just embrace you we we embrace each other Our grandmother, our mom, our, our sister, our, as we remember, Father, we choose to remember you. Just in your name, we choose to pray. Amen. Amen. And I 
this time, we are going to open the floor for remarks. We ask that um, we limit our remarks to three minutes or less. Amen. That we respect the family and their wishes at this time. Amen. So at this time, we ask that if you have any remarks, that you would come at this time. <laughs> we'll let him go first. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm usually the one with the jokes. Uh, I have to excuse me, it's really hard. I will say this. I think mama's name was Miss McGee for about two days. Right up until the time I bought her her first pack of smokes. <laughs> After that, she told me to call her mama. And it, it has been mama for 30 years. 30 years. All of my adult life. And some. And what brings me comfort is there were only three people in my life that showed me the way to God. My grandmother, Mama White, and my wife. Because I, can, I can't count how many times I came to the house on Burwood and she was sitting at the table with her clothes somewhat off of her. So true, so true. Read, reading her word in one hand and puffing on two cigarettes in the other. That's right. Then after we got married, she would still read her word, puff on her cigarette, and turn her oxygen down. Never really got that part out. <laughs> but but that was that was mama. And when she wasn't reading the word, she was frying chicken. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, that's a sermon right there. Huh? Lord Jesus. The chicken Lord. Thank you. Didn't have to do it, but he did. Yeah. Jesus. <sighs> but uh, all jokes aside, she will be forever missed. And she leaves behind a legacy that I see every time I look at my wife, every time I look at my daughter, every time I look at all y'all faces. That was my car partner. I do this without crying. I did good 
my sisters and my brother, my niece, my nieces and my nephews thought I was going to break down, but I didn't. I thank God for that because I, I live, I'm acting like my mom. Hi, Brian! Think of my other brother! Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> Yeah, um, um, hey, I'm excited. I can see my big head brother. Dang, I can't even talk now. I'm sorry. Um, I just thank God. I just live in my life like my mom want me to. I'd like to thank God that she got to see me four months clean. Amen. So, I'm so happy for that. So, I'm just acting like I know my mom will act. She won't want me to clown. She just want me to live like Diddy. You know, I'm in a better place. I'm with your brother now, your auntie, your uncle, your granddaddy. So, just y'all, thank y'all for coming. Hello, you might not be able to hear me because I'm kind of short, but uh, <laughs> JD just said he's going to whoop my butt, but um, I just wanted to say that Grandma's Sweet Potato Pie was amazing. Um, I also remember spending the night at our house a couple times and we ate peanut butter jelly sandwiches together, sometimes just peanut butter, and yeah, I loved her very much, and I also only cried once. So, yeah, that's it. Hi, family. My mama can't nothing express, can't, can't nothing bring my mama back, but, and it hurts. It really, really hurts. My mama, she looked out for me when I didn't have no feelings for myself. When I did not love myself, my mama took me in. She, she put her own place in jeopardy for me. But that's what a mama do. She showed unconditional love. And I love her with everything in me. And I'm gonna miss her with everything in me. Miss Geraldine Light, the greatest woman in the world. grandma man I remember one of my earliest memories with my grandma was uh she was trying to teach me how to wink <laughs> I didn't know how to do it right but she'd always call me a job turkey now everybody know I usually would be wearing a hat on any occasion but I know my grandma would hate me wearing a hat indoors She taught me how to play poker, how to play everything. And I whooped her butt the first time I ever played, too. <laughs> I love you, Grandma. grandmother was more than just a grandmother to me. She was my best friend. Every Sunday, it don't matter if I had work or not, I would call off just to go play spades with her. And although she was my dad's partner, I guarantee her butt is still hurting from all them butt whoopings me and my mama gave her on that their card table. Praise the Lord. <laughs> But 
but there'll be so many memories of her calling my mom every day on my birthday asking me what I wanted and the answer would always be the same. I want your sheep potato pie or your chili. She would say no, but eventually she would cave in because she can never say no to her baby. <laughs> but not only did she love to spoil me, but whenever I needed somebody to pray for me or my family or my situation, I knew exactly who to call. It don't matter how bad she was feeling or the pain she was going through. She was always there for her family, her kids, her grandkids, even her friends. My grandmother was sick, but she always made a way. She was my superhero. She was my superwoman. Everything that I do from this day forward, I'm doing it for you, Grandma. I promise I'm going to do it for you. Amen. I remember so many, I had so many memories. I remember when uh, Mama McGee became Mama McGee for me, you know. It's been, my Lord, I can't even count the years. I don't even know how many years it's been. It's been like, yeah, it's about all my life, <laughs> to be real, about all my life. I'm only 39, so it's been, <laughs> and it was a 33, 30 years, 30, so, so, wow, you know, so many loving memories, you know, I remember the first day it clicked in my mind that I had two mamas, two grandmas, two, you know, two mamas, you know what I'm saying, as a child, you don't even, you don't, you don't realize it until it actually clicks, like, wait a minute, I got another mama, that's awesome. And she was that for us, for me, you know, somebody to, like you said, somebody, always somebody to talk to, somebody to come out fun with. She taught us, how, taught me, tried to teach me. I didn't really pick it up that well, how to play spades. <laughs> but she did, you know, and then, I mean, we talk about cards, we talk about spades, we talk about those times. But what it was is the love of passing something on that meant so much that time is what it was. Even if I didn't learn the game, I had the time, I had the memory, I had the ability to say I spent time. You know, a lot of people don't, don't take the time. And I'm not saying the children don't take the time, that's hard nowadays anyway for children to take time, but we have a situation where parents and, and grandparents aren't taking the time. But she did. She took the time. And I love her for it. I love her for it. And I know when I, when I heard the news, first thing came to my mind is, boy, I can hear that card table in heaven today. But <laughs> so first, first thing that came to my mind was like, whoa, buddy, buddy. I just, the joy, I'm telling you, the joy. To be in a place of unbridled joy, where nothing can enter into your being that would keep you from being happy. Can you imagine the volume of joy that's happening right now in heaven? Amen? And to be able just to have a, a, just a semblance of that joy, in a hard time. That's what's powerful. So I thank God for Mel White. I thank God for Mama McGee, who she was for me. I thank God for her because she imparted so much. 
So I just I just wanted to come and say that. Um, as we go through the remainder of the service, is there if there is no more remarks, I don't want to cut anyone off. We have another selection coming from Patrice McGee. And then right after that, we will have words of comfort coming from Trevon Dawson. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. For some reason, I couldn't see it. Amen. And then, so let's, uh, let's our hearts and minds be ready. Amen. Amen. I, um, I'm assuming that this is being seen by people because I'm receiving text messages. <laughs> Amen. That's why I'm looking down at my phone. So a part of a remarks that want to be read is from Auntie Roxy. One of my sisters whom I love dearly, Geraldine White, Jerry, has got her wings. She was a soldier for the Lord. A prayer warrior, my best friend. She taught me so much about the word of God. For this, I will miss the late night telephone calls. We talk a little, laugh a little, but pray and praise God a lot. We even sang songs on the phone. What a beautiful soul to have been in my life. But I praise God even more now. She no long, she's no longer in pain, no more crying, no more disappointments. Sis, you free at last, take your rest. I thought I may have had screamed and cried my eyes out when I got the call, but I remembered what we said we would do when the time came. We would praise God for we would be at rest. So here's to you, my sister, my friend from Roxy. Amen. So, I do not know why my mother-in-law of 30 years would want me to sing a song. But I remember when I met her. I met her chicken. Well, no, I met the aroma of chicken before I met the person that cooked the chicken. I went into this youth conference, and um, I had been at home for a while, and I, my daddy was teaching at this conference, and um, I guess he had mentioned my name a few times. So when I came in, people were wondering where I had been. But when I came in, what I smelled was chicken. So I wasn't thinking about the teenagers at the conference. I was thinking about getting a piece of that fried chicken. <laughs> And when I tasted that chicken, my God, my God, nobody, and I do mean nobody, my child come close and her daughter come close, but nobody makes fried chicken like mama, okay? And we were talking about this at home, and it was not, see, she didn't, just cut up the chicken. See, it was amazing because I was at the house one day and I watched her do this now. And she had some secret things she put in there and I wasn't, but I was watching the preparation of how she did this chicken. She would go get a whole case of chicken, legs and quarters was I'm telling, am I telling the truth? And she would fry it up for the church. And I mean, she would be in there early morning, two thirty, three 3 o'clock, setting it up, frying this chicken. Now hear me out now. And it would be frozen, and she would let it just run water over this chicken. And then she would put her hands in this chicken and cut this chicken up. And then she would season it with her hands. She did not wear gloves. She was not afraid. She got deep down in this chicken, and she marinated this chicken. Come on now, listen. Come on now, 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 listen, listen, listen. And this is what I want to say. The love she had for making chicken was so deep in her fingers that the endorphins and the love just flowed into that chicken that when you ate it, you tasted the love she had for the people when she cooked that chicken. And what I want to tell you, family, that's the same type of love God has for you. 
He pours out that same type of love on you every day. He wakes you up. Every day he gives you breath. Every day he gives you a new reason to move and have your being. God does the same thing. The way your mama fried that chicken with love is the same way God pours out his love on you. So I just want to remember that as you go home and to your different places and you laying there deep in the middle of the night and you wondering why, what's going on, just know that God loves you. Let him pour that same love on you and receive it to heal that hurt where you're hurting at. If you want to know where I am going, where I am going, Yeah, if anybody asks you, oh yes, where I am going, where I am going, oh soon, she said, tell them for me, I'm going up yonder. Hey, she's gone up yonder. Mm, she's gone up yonder to be with her Lord. She said, tell them for me, I'm gone up yonder. Hey, I'm gone up yonder. Mm, I'm gone up yonder, yes, to be with my Lord. Yeah, yeah. She said, I took the pain. Hey, all of the heartaches they bring. The comfort in and knowing I'll soon be gone. Oh, yes, she did. And as God gave her grace, she ran her race. Until she saw her Savior face to face. She said, tell them for me I'm gone up yonder. Hey, she's gone up yonder. Mm. She's gone up yonder to be with her Lord. Tell them for me. Yonder. I am gone up yonder. Mm, I'm gone up yonder to be with my Good morning, everybody. I know y'all laughing at me because I got on heels. Oh, okay. Um, in all seriousness, I love God and what he's done. I embrace... Um, I just embrace his spirit even now because God is so wonderful and gracious and glorious for even the opportunity. Um, so I'm going to start off with a verse. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, um, start the children off on the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not turn from it. So the name of the eulogy, sermon, whatever you guys want to call it is, um, what my mother taught me. Um, as a child, my mom was strict. 
She was strong. She was unwavering in her decisions. Um, when she told us to do something, we better did it. Uh, give an example, Sheila, Larry, Didi, Trevon, get in there and do them dishes. And if for some reason we lost our mind and we did not do those dishes, she had no problem waking us up at 2 o'clock in the morning. The difference is now all the dishes in the cabinets were now in that sink too. Um, and you had to wash them all. And you cannot go to bed until you did. Um, same thing as Saturday mornings. She would wake us up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go out in the yard and do the yard or, <clears throat> excuse me, or um, even wash out the cabinets, the refrigerator. Um, we had to we had to do that. Like, we, we couldn't watch the Saturday morning's cartoons. My mother was not a respecter of the Saturday morning cartoons. And anybody that's my age or a little bit older, y'all know that the Saturday cartoons was the best cartoons. She didn't care about that. Um, I also remember my mother teaching my brother that when he's walking down the street with a woman to make sure that he was on the outside as a protector, um, she taught us to say yes ma'am and no ma'am, yes sir and no sir and my sisters and I, how to sit like a lady, how to um, respond with respect. And even, <laughs> I can remember my mother for many, many years did not even wear pants. She wore skirts and dresses all the time. Um, but I also remember waking up in the middle of the night and my mother sitting at the table with her study Bible, her concordance, um, the Bible dictionary, studying the word of God. I remember her engulfing herself in the word of God. She didn't just read it, she studied it. She wanted to know the heart and the mind of God. So, and I was having a conversation with my kids this week and they said, you know, mom, grandma taught us the same thing. When she would watch us, when y'all, when you and daddy were at work, she would babysit us and she made us learn the books of the Bible. She did the same thing with us. She made us learn verses. So, what did my mother teach me? My mother taught me how to fight. She taught me how to, when the devil was coming up against me and I feel unloved and unsure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. She taught me that when I feel uncared for, when I just, when the devil was in my head and I just feel so alone, cast all your cares on me for I love you. I care for you. When, when the enemy is whispering, when life happens, just like I've always taught my kids, because life will happen. You have to know how to fight. You have to put on your weapon. You have to get your weapon. And what is your weapon? The word of God. Nothing else matters but the word of God. Okay? Nothing. Yes, mama's gone. But, and I, I keep hearing a lot of people say, yeah, she got to see Larry. No. That's beautiful, but that's not what's important. She got to meet the man that she studied about. She got to finally see him face to face. She got to hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Did she get it right all the time? No. We don't get it right all the time. But one thing she did get right is instilling that word in her kids and her grandkids. And for that, I will always honor and love my mother. 
because she was amazing with the word of God. Um, God is awesome. God is love. And I will not be remiss to assume that everybody in here has accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay? That being said, if you have not, this life is the best you will have. That's it. This, this is the best you will get. But if you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this is the worst that you will get. Again, God is love. So many times as Christians, we mix, we miss the mark. We taught the do's and the don'ts about the Bible. But we didn't teach the most important thing that God wanted us to know is that he loved us. He loved us so much that he gave his only son. So that being said, if it's anybody here, anybody that you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time. Because tomorrow is not promised. It's, it's not promised. And y'all can read, everybody can repeat after me. Father, I'm sorry. And I have sinned. And I'm asking you to come into my life as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead with all power in his hands. And I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. Teach me, Jesus. Teach me your ways so I can be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, thank you, Jesus. I thank everybody for coming. I thank everybody that's online. Um, I just, I'm not sad at all. God has given me the peace that surpasses all understanding. I am rejoicing right now that I had the opportunity to know this wonderful woman. Okay. Um, One last thing. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. Well, I guess you say what can make me feel this way my girl talking about my girl my girl i love you mom
Amen. At this time, let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for all the loving memories, the loving times, the loving experiences we've had with our mother. Max, as you be with the family during this time, as you be with every, each and every one that she touched, give us the joy that she now feels the best we can experience it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.